graphic that I want to show you. Okay. So, sound good? Sounds good. Alrighty. Uh, since you read last time, it is my turn. Okay. Harry woke up on Saturday, grateful for a day off. He slid through slid through the curtains groggily, only to see Ron standing in the corner, pulling on his pants. Where are you going? Ron shot him an angry look. We have to go see Hermione's parents, he said, and went silent. He was apparently had been thinking about something very hard. Then, turning red, he said, Look, um, there's something Hermione and I for didn't tell you the other day. Really didn't know if we were actually going to. You're getting married? Well, hey, don't use legal, legal le legs on me now. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't tell me before. Well, we didn't really know if we were actually going to. Then our parents were, were all like, get married, and we didn't know if we could or if we were old enough. Harry, he said all this while he took off his shirt and replaced it in a half-hearted way. Harry glared at him. I'm sorry, when is this happening? Surely not today. No, uh, shouted Ron. I mean, eventually, but I'm, she's not, we're, we're not. Ah, oh, I see. Do you want to? Well, yeah, I just, I thought we'd wait for a while, a long while. Like years? But now this has happened? It's a baby, Ron. Not a this. Yeah, thanks. I got it. Uh, never mind. I have to get out of here. Ron walked through the door and disappeared. Harry rolled his eyes, wondering if there had been an opportunity for him to have his friends back. Now the only people he had were Neville, Luna, and Jenny, and all of which he didn't really talk to. Howdy, Harry. Some random girl Harry didn't rec said some random girl Harry didn't recognize. She walked past the door, followed by someone who looked strangely familiar. Hey! He darted out the door and chased after the two girls. Hey, you stop! <laughs> the two girls stopped and looked at him. Oh, no. The first girl was one he he'd never remember seeing, but both looked like his age. The first one was sort of pale, with long, curly brown hair and dark plastic glasses. The second one was a tad taller. She had short brown hair, brown eyes, and a long nose like a little, a little like Ron's. You're the one who told... I never said anything to anyone, she said the brown-eyed girl, shaking her head. She had a weird accent that Harry couldn't quite place. Yeah, you did. You're the one who told Ron I was, was with Ginny, which I wasn't. She looked at him doubtfully. I can't believe you told people that, she shouted the, shouted the curly-haired one, throwing an angry glare at the other. She had the same accent. You never said it was a secret. Finally, Harry placed it. Where are you two from? The one with the glasses looked at him. America. Well, Texas, more specifically. We're transfer students. <laughs> he looks back and forth as, <laughs> back and forth between the two of them unsure can you do that oh yeah said the second people do it all the time except not lately they stared at him silently narrowing their eyes as they inspected them he didn't like the staring i told you i told you <laughs> oh no <laughs> i told you i'm ashamed so unashamed <laughs> like not even like oh yeah here's a character who's kind of the author but not really oh no <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought i was joking <laughs> i was not <laughs> take some some drink of your uh, your fruit flavored labelless water <laughs> Like oh I said, it, you don't remember. it's supposed to be obvious. It's like, it's no, like, oh yeah, no, this is not, this is just a new character. Your canon totally the Harry Potter universe confirmed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
I guess. Oh my god. So should we disclaim that we're not going to say the names? <laughs> we're, we're not. We're, we're not going to. Uh, to say the names for uh, insurance purposes. Uh, <laughs> but, and, and even if they do, but say, anyone who happens to be reading along, they are posted. Those are the names. <laughs> we aren't gonna say who these names are affiliated with for insurance purposes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, let's do this. <clears throat> I'm ooh, I'm in my seventh year. This is my cousin. She's in her sixth year, like you. Only she's in Slytherin. He gave a suspicious look. What are you doing in here? Uh, <laughs> uh, she shrugged. A little this, a little that. Oh, on the look for new gossip, as always. Yeah, well, I'd appreciate it if you would keep quiet every once in a while. And you shouldn't be in other houses' common rooms. Why not? That Luna Lovegood is in here all the time, among other places. Yeah, well, Luna's... What? She smiled devilishly and said nothing else. Well, I better get going, said it. <laughs> Apparently, Ernie McMillan is making a fuss in the Hufflepuff common room. Without another word, she, disapp she dissipated with a loud crack. Harry jumped about a mile. How did you- you can't- Hogwarts, a history said. Oh, right. Well, how'd she? Where else? Well, partly so. My great, 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 and even <clears throat> more great grandmother was a house elf and got married to the wizard she worked for, which had an interesting side effects. For the children. Married a house elf. You can do that? Oh yeah! In America you can do almost anything. Anyway, so we can uh, apparate whenever we want to. And the ministry only thinks that it's the other elves. We can also use bits of magic that the ministry doesn't pick up on. And are really good at wandless magic. Oh, well... That's... that's... Really weird? We know. <laughs> but why would someone want to marry a house elf? Why would someone want to marry a giantess? Talk about black holes of doom. Besides, you can't control the forces of love, Harry. <laughs> oh, black hole of doom. <laughs> <laughs> Black hole of doom. <laughs> My life is a black hole of doom. Uh, um, <laughs> he wished people would stop telling him that, and I walked away up the girl's stairs. He thought this over for a minute before he thought this over for a minute and went back upstairs to change, shaking his head. Hi, Harry," said Neville, passing by the room. Harry followed down the stairs. And went to breakfast before hurrying off to Quidditch. He made it to the Quidditch pitch where... Standing in front of Jenny looking angry. Jenny was glaring at her. I'm sorry, Jenny, but there's no way in hell McGonagall will ever let you play. Jenny took off toward the building and didn't look at him as he passed. Holy mother of Sauron, Harry. I think I might just kill the Weasleys. Harry chuckled in spite of himself. What's the matter with them? They've got, like, extra fertile magic blood. It makes them all mad. Hey, watch it! The Gryffindor Harry met earlier was sitting on her broom, hovering over them. Keep your shirt on, I've got everything under control. Tell her to keep her hands off the quaddles. <laughs> uh, the Slytherin was sitting on her broom a little while away. Smiling at Harry and waving, he thought for a moment about not waving back, and then did anyway. Ooh. And he took off down the Quidditch bridge, throwing the quaffle back and forth to each other. Ooh. Threw the quaffle towards the goal and made it in spite of his efforts. The Gryffindors had started crowding around his cheer while the Slytherins scowled. That's not nice. I'm a beater. Yeah, well, your chasing skills need a little work. 
Set up. Ooh. Why don't you try a little beating and see how that works out? No one ever told you told you that you can hit a wicked bul bulger. I don't have to hit anything. All I have to do is be faster than you. And I am. She followed Harry and Kate into the changing rooms while Anne stood on the pitch fuming. Harry asked her again why she and the Slytherins were friends. Well, it's normally pretty tame, explained Ooh. But she gets kind of angry before Quidditch games. I think it's the beater in her. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Harry changed quickly and went onto the pitch for he and Kate to talk to the new stand-in keeper, Seamus Finnegan, who would be playing in games since Ron had to leave for the weekend. Kate scolded the new beaters, Alison and Mer who were very <laughs> What? You could just, you know what? And here's the problem. And so, you know, we'll need, probably need to go back and edit this because these were my friends that I was telling you about. So you could just use first names if you want. Mm -hmm. So, if you want, to, sorry, <laughs> should have warned you that was coming. <laughs> Hedge. And, and over third <laughs> Another A. <laughs> and a good deal younger than most members of the team. They had been trying to hit each other with the boulders while they started screaming at them. The permanent chasers had been Jenny, but Jenny had to replace Hedge. She looked. Jenny had to be replaced with. Hedge. She looked less than excited to be there, although she did much to Harry's disliking. Cheer up again when she saw him come out to the pitch. Harry took a moment to inspect the new Slytherin members. The new beater <laughs> could hit surprisingly hard. She could give she could have given Gra Crab a black eye for annoying her. They had a new chaser, a boy who'd Harry never seen before, but he was too worried because the boy looked a little slow in the head. Draco, as always, had returned to see her and was standing with on the ground with an arm around his thin girlfriend. She was decked out in Hufflepuff gear, but had a green Slytherin green scarf around her neck. Odd looking girl, isn't she? And what Draco do to his hair? Okay, so... I'm sorry for this. That's about to happen for the word that's about to be said if anyone gets offended by this. Oh, it's, this gonna, it's gonna be a big, fat bleep later. Okay, okay. Sorry. This was like, again, this was like 15 years ago, and I uh, know it's not PC to say it now. It wasn't PC to say it then, but said it anyway, so... I pre-apologize for this. <sighs> and then you know what? I'm not going to say it. I've just decided. <laughs> Those robes make you look stupid. Or said to <laughs> Grabbed her beater's bat and hurled one of the struggling bludgers in his direction. Harry was very glad to see that Ooh. was as fast as she had boasted because she got out of the way and sped off as the bludger chased her around the pitch. She already appeared to be enjoying. She appeared to be enjoying herself, and that didn't stop until McGonagall stormed onto the field, screaming and telling people to stop messing around. Captain, get your teams to the center of the pitch now. They all lined up, and Hooch blew the whistle. A small boy from Raven Ravenclaw was commenting, commentating. For a moment, all Henry Harry did was stand back and watch the game. The Gryffindor beaters were in no way, were in no way Fred and George, but they played fair. Sent out of the game in five minutes with a broken jaw. Ooh. Got her back by scoring three times in a row, so <laughs> retaliated by aiming at Harry himself, but he was too fast for the aging vulture. Harry viewed the game with fascinated interest. The Gryffindor beaters ganged up on Crab, who was knocked out when both bludgers hit him on opposite sides of the head. Draco also had a close call with the hospital wing when he ran purposely into. <laughs> She chased after him and tackled him in the air. From Slytherin's side, Harry could see, uh, Harry could hear Pansy screaming. Katie Bell scored another point for Gryffindor. Rendering what uh, said to get out of being suspended from the game, Harry, uh, Harry finally spotted the snitch. 
Draco was suspended high in the air, looking unaware and completely uncaring after a spray with the chaser, who was back to scoring more points on Slytherin. Harry took off after the snitch. It looks like Harry Potter, the Chosen One, has seen the snitch. At the sound of the Chosen One, several things happened. Harry rolled his eyes. The Slytherin booed. <laughs> fed past him, giggling with her brown hair whip whipping behind her. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eyes, Harry noticed, <laughs> falling closely by a bludger, she was obviously trying to get into the right spot to hit. Harry is still trying to focus on the snitch, Draco, who is now chasing him, and <laughs> who looked like she was going to run right into it. Watch it, hit! Suddenly, she vanished, and the crowd gasped as she disapparated, sending a huge crack that ricocheted across the field. Several students and teachers got to their feet, looking for it. Looking for her. The bulger she had chasing hit Harry's side as his fingers laced around the snitch. He felt the snitch struggle in his hand and fell off his broom. She apparated again, still on her broom, and crashed right into Draco. Once again, Harry could hear Pansy screaming as they all collapsed on the ground with a terrifying thump. McGonagall and Snape were racing out onto the field, followed closely by Hagrid, Madame Pomfrey, and Jenny. Harry shoved Draco off of him and immediately grabbed his side. His ribs were aching. Why, hello, Draco. <laughs> Harry, screamed Jenny, racing towards him. That bludger hit you right on. Are you okay? Madame Pomfrey grumbled about the dangers of Quidditch while McGonagall stood behind her, turned back, rolling her eyes. Snape helped <laughs> Draco to their feet, ignoring... <laughs> Why, hello, Professor Snape. Come on, Potter, said Madame Pomfrey, helping him to his feet carefully. Let's get you to the hospital wing. She conjured a stretcher and Harry ro rode while he, Jenny, and Kitty all talked about the game. Madame Pomfrey listened disapproving disapprovingly and barked at him when they laughed about Krabby's fractured skull. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> oh so I told you. Like, super, super, like, there is no denying that those were the authors. <laughs> that was me and the other narrator just being like, boop. <laughs> oh, God, it's a bit like d and I have a character that I purposely talk to the characters as. And yeah. these characters, like, they all know, like, they, they know what's going to happen in that timeline. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's going to do it for uh, this, this Let's Read. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Yeah. I don't believe in destiny, I just do what's best for me Don't listen to my enemies, they're just full of jealousy Yeah, this legacy, you gon' see what's left of me You gon' see success in me, you ain't seen the rest of me I just me. wanna be the best at what I know Better than the rest, just watch me grow Put me to the test and watch me go This is my quest, I'ma make it known They call me obsessive, oh I know Call me selective with my notes Call me aggressive with my flow Call me offensive even though Yo, I ain't gonna lie Life's tough, try to get by, life's rough Try to do it right, it's not enough Even though you try, you still mess up But I'm still gonna fight for what I love Still gonna die for what I love Still gonna try, I won't give up Still gonna fight until I've